Welcome, fellow anglers, to the Working Class Fishing Podcast, a place for all anglers, amateur or expert, to share their stories and learn about fishing. Join your hosts, John and Brian, each episode as they debunk the perceived inaccessibility to fishing, break down the barriers of any and all angling methods, and hear stories from other anglers and their own journeys with fishing. Now, let's get this show started. Welcome back to another episode of the Working Class Fishing Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brian, and here is the esteemed Mr. John Morris S. Esquire the Third with our sponsors. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. This episode of Working Class Fishing is brought to you by CD Fishing USA. That is Composite Development. That's one of our new sponsors. Go check them out. Uh, we'll be telling you all more about them shortly. And then you've got 317 Flies, Lid Rig, Angry Rooster Fly Company, and uh, myself, Morris Flyco. But uh, everybody, we've got an excellent guest tonight. Brian, I'm not going to cut you off. I'm just excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So John's right. We got an excellent guest. Number one, this guest is one of our top guys that supports our podcast, but he also does a lot of cool stuff himself. And in, in addition to snake breeding and <laughs> running around the hills and doing a bunch of other cool stuff and, and commenting on all of our posts, he's also big time into fishing. No surprise. We got Kyle Rowe. I said that right, didn't I? Rowe. Rowe. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle Rowe. Good. Uh, you may know him as Dreamscale Adventures, and you'll see his comments on a lot of our posts uh, through Instagram and Facebook, uh, even on our videos uh, over on YouTube. And uh, we wanted to have Kyle on our show for a long time. So we booked him way a long time ago from this point right now. And we wanted to get him on here to, to talk and sit down. So Kyle, thanks so much for being on the show. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here, boys. Man, it seems Hi. like, it, yeah, well, you know, it, this just goes without saying, you know, uh, with uh everything going on and all that kind of stuff. We're coming around, you know, we're finally out of the holidays, everything else. And, uh, thank God, you know, yeah, no shit. I mean, uh, we get, we get through it, but we've had this plan for a long time, excited to talk to you and learn more about you and share you with everybody because you do a lot of cool stuff. And, you know, not only are you into Tenkara, you also do conventional angling and, uh, you, you know, you've done salt. We've been talking for quite a while now. So Absolutely. why don't you tell people about yourself and where you're at and what you're doing? Uh, I am originally from Florida, uh, central Florida specifically. Um, and I, I've grown up fishing. Uh, I've been here in East Tennessee since, uh, I think February of 2000. Um, unfortunately it's not one of my favorite places. It is beautiful, but, uh, <laughs> It's gotten old after, you know, this long. Uh, so I'm no stranger to uh, saltwater uh, lake fishing in Florida. And then as well as here, uh, cold water rivers, uh, blue lines, lakes, all of it, you name it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> but 80% of what I do now is Tim Cara, um, just because it's so useful uh, in my area, which, you know, John knows he's been here. Uh, he's fished this area and it's just crazy overgrown goofy shit to drag yourself through and find a fish and uh, I think that's what I love about Tinkara is you know just being able to drag yourself through hell and find a jewel in a pool <laughs> you know it's 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 kind of wild right the mountains we have <laughs> back east and you know Tennessee you know Brian chuckles because they're not huge mountains right these are hills. <laughs> they're, they're, they're hills, right? But, dude, you can get so lost so quick in Absolutely. Appalachia. They, it is like, it is a fucking time warp when you get back into those blue lines. It is. And I've had multiple occasions where I've just got off track and had to follow the stream down because I know it led to the road. 
<laughs> Man. So it's just like a wall of brush then. That, that's what you're contending with around a lot of those. It's just nothing but brush and probably a bunch it, of shit that bites you and jumps on you. Every stream around here is just covered with rhododendron and it's bullshit. That is the most useless <laughs> fucking plant on the planet. Uh, I swear it. Every time you make a cast and you fuck up, which happens a lot, it happens to just suck your fucking line into it. And I I don't know. I've lost more flies than I can count. Mainly on hook sets. You know, hook sets are free, so I tend to miss quite a few of those on a rock or you know, whatever. And it'll launch the fly into the tree and there we are. So you guys got rhododendron there? I, I'm I'm just uh, sorry I, I didn't want to cut you off, John. But you guys have rhododendron. Uh more of it than anybody should ever have to fucking deal with shit we got it in the mountains here so I, <laughs> I i know what you're talking about i got one in my backyard actually i got one in the backyard and one in the front yard also cut it down and burn it yeah that's, i've considered <laughs> it many times <laughs> it's sticky beautiful at, when it blooms it but it's yeah sticky motherfucker man it makes a mess you would god damn rhododendron and laurels oh my god the laurels they're so pretty but holy fucking shit fuck those things just go out there with a fucking chainsaw and draw. It's for, yeah. yeah, just cutting them down. But you it's know, like it, it's it's awful, like in regards to fishing, because it's a pain in the ass. But dude, it makes for a great adventure. Like, honestly. It really does. And that, you know, again, that is really what I love about it. It's which I'm sure I could do the same fucking thing with a fly rod, and eventually I'm going to get into that. Uh, but it's right now, this is my thing, and it's working for me. People shit on it all the time. I'm constantly online bitching back and forth with people that try to shit on Tim Cara fishing. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all out here doing the same shit. We're all catching fish. Dude, that's you know, that's and, all that's all it's about. Sorry, dude, yeah. I'm cutting you off like a motherfucker. No, no, you're Sorry. good. I'm enjoying you watching, you know, watching you eat this brisket. Dude, I'm I'm chowing down. <laughs> God damn, you're making me hungry, John. <laughs> Look, you don't you don't get this kind of physique by not eating a bunch of shit you shouldn't. <laughs> that's exactly right. The peak of male performance. Oh. <laughs> exactly and no tofu over here just nice red meat briskets only <laughs> man it's just uh and that's what it's all about man is not the brisket but getting out there and fishing <laughs> exactly. you know just it doesn't matter how you fish just go fish like I, I i poke fun at everything right and i think that's just inherently coming from the military i think you can make a joke out of everything so I make, I make fun of Euro nymphing, but I Euro nymph. I make fun of Tenkara, <laughs> but I I I I sold my Tenkara rod. To, <laughs> but 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 it was to one of the fixed line freaks, and he kind of kind of needed it at the time. So does, doesn't hurt me at all because it was like it was more like passing on a gift. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. getting somebody else into it. Yeah, and uh, but I did <laughs> Tenkara. You know, it's like. The only thing I think I don't make fun of is streamers. <laughs> <laughs> we love throwing streamers, though. We do. We do. <laughs> I, yeah. I'll throw a streamer on some car about all day long. Man, it's, yeah. you, you know, I don't think it matters how you fish as long as you're fishing, you know. And, and I still can't wrap my head around why, why there's this big divide between – fixed line and western fly i i've never really got a straight answer it's just like oh that's one of those fixed line guys you know uh, you know or i i don't i don't understand it i don't get it it, it really makes no sense to me whatsoever it's like you want to go out and have 16 feet of line that to fish with that's fine go for it you know we're 20 uh you know uh, and and if you want to go spay fish go for it i'm not a fan of spay I, you know, a bunch of the guys I fish with call them water frothers because they're going up to do the snap tea and it's just fucking shit flying everywhere. But, you know, go for it. I don't give a shit what you do. You know, if you're out there, you're fishing, you're buying fishing licenses, you know, uh, being a part of it. What's the big goddamn deal? You know, is it like this little 1% cult of fucking weird ass people that hate it? I, I don't get it. 
uh, truthfully, uh, I haven't really met any uh, just traditional or Western, whatever, fly fishermen, because uh, it, it just hasn't been my wheelhouse long enough. But I've, and I've said this to multiple people uh, that you guys know, um, every fly fisherman I've ever met is a complete dick except for John Morris, and he's a fucking hard ass. <laughs> <laughs> and those are my exact words to everybody. Um, because literally, John is the only one I've ever met that hasn't been a complete cocksucker. Well. So and I, not to say that I won't. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not, by any means. Uh, yeah, no. I was just going to say, Instagram does a pretty good job of finding people that are assholes. <laughs> but but it also does a really good job of finding people that are, like, inclusive as well. Yeah. Um, but where you live, Tinkar is, like, not popular, but is popular. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like that. Tinkar is very popular in the far west <laughs> and in the east. Kind of not so much here in the middle of the U.S., but yeah, because you have a lot of you know warm water stuff there, which I I've never really understood the point of trying to sling a fixed line rod on a pond or something like that. Like in your area, for example, you know, it just it has its purpose. Um, like as far as like if I want to fish a pond or a river or a lake or you know, I'm I'm not gonna pull out the tin car rod. I'm gonna pull out a conventional setup. You know, I think I don't think any one specific fishing style, if you will, shines over any other. Each one, each one has its own kind of gimmick. You know, like exactly, like tin car is really good if you <laughs> like high sticking. Um, I think it's really good, but I think Euro nymphing does the same thing. Uh, people are gonna hate that I fucking said that, but Euro nymphing. <laughs> I see there, the comments gonna, now. There's there's gonna be so many Tinkara people also, or Tinkara anglers that get upset about that statement, but it's the same fucking thing. You guys are just Euro nymphing with a softer line, mm -hmm. and then you guys put on level line, and level line is literally just pretty much a fucking Euro leader. Yeah, like it's it's the same fucking thing. You're just you're you're nymphing without a reel, and uh, I mean it's literally all the same shit. Like everything that you learn from your own nymphing, you can apply directly to Tenkara. Mm -hmm. So, but that being said, it's a great great way to get kids started in not just kids but beginner anglers started in understanding how water flows like how to how to read water mm -hmm. that might sound a little weird but um you're taking away one less thing you have to worry about and that's a reel and i know that's such a crucial part of all fishing but if you can just literally have them cast this fluorescent orange line and let them watch that line and there's no repercussions really of a bad cast no not because at all. you know it's the line's not super heavy and weighted that is one thing i'll have to say is uh it's way easier to mess up a fly cast at that distance than it is fixed line. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like everybody, it, it, they, like I said, they've all got their gimmicks, but in car and you're in the like the same shit, dude. I don't, people, people hate that you say that, but it's because it's true and they don't want to admit it. Yeah. No, oh, I understand that completely because I'm the asshole that I throw the shit out of squirmy worms all day long <laughs> and I get shit on for it. Yeah, <laughs> but I also didn't hike a couple of miles into the woods to uh, not catch fish, so I'm going to use what works. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I and uh, I think about it uh, um, here in the West as as opposed to where you're at. Tenkara has it, it; it can be used here, but our river systems and flow discharge are so much heavier uh, here that it's it's in very selective spots. Um, ponds, yes, totally great way for kids or i i mean i would get a kick out of it just busting bluegills uh oh, you know day. i, I mean, love all day long oh, yeah. just 
smacking bluegills on it. And I think it would be just, you know, you take the kids out. They don't have a reel that, you know, they loosen the drag up and it just explodes into a big ass bird's nest. Yeah. But you, you give them a rod and they're just, whoa, 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 you know, and they can work on that 10 and two and as long and you give them plenty of back cast room and you get them to lay the line out with a, with a good dry and you say, watch it, watch it, watch it. And then you get that like that. And they, that that's, what's going to get them is that, that take off the surface. And it's a great way for that, but we love it too. You know, uh, anything that eats a dry fly is always fun. Um, oh, I mean, streamer sure. eats are violent, you know, um, I love it when my line goes tight with a nymph or, or, you know, I nymph under an indicator with a, you know, uh, standard nine foot rod. I love it. Yeah. I love, I love watching that indicator drain. Absolutely. Um, it, there's just something about it. So there's... it's just amazing to me though, that, that, um, there's still just this whole bitch fest about Tenkara, you know, I mean, conventional guys versus fly guys out here. That's like fighting words, man. I mean, that's that's a big ass because we got our little local steelhead hole down here, and and everybody goes down there and fishes when they have like an hour to fish. You may get a fish, you may not, but you'll have like three or four guys with spay rods down there. You'll have conventional guys, and the guys with the spay rods are doing snap keys and they're fishing like the really fast water and everything else, trying to get it to swing. And and the conventional guys are like, fuck these guys, you know, they're yelling at them up there. They're like you guys need to go somewhere else, go around the fucking the shoots or whatever, you know, but it's like, who cares if that guy actually gets a steelhead on a fly in this run, fucking more power to him. You know, uh, that's what it is. You get a salmon out of some, you know, 20 foot deep hole, you know, more power to you. But, yeah. uh, the, the, the conventional verse fly thing out here is like that, that that's, you know, fist to cuffs gun pulling shit. I, well, it's because you know, like Kyle said, and Kyle, I know you're about to say something. Keep oh, that no, up. You... Don't let me get you off track here. Absolutely. Yeah, have some more brew, sir. <laughs> um, it's just like Not too many. <laughs> it's uh, like it's because, like Kyle said, there's so many fucking pretentious people in the fly world, and I, I, you know, as a as a member of that world, you know, as um. I see it. I'm not fucking ignorant to it. You know, there's a lot of fucking assholes. There's a lot of dudes that believe fly fishing is the only way to fish. But that goes back to the, you know, the gear guys. It's like they believe that fly fishing is stupid. And yeah, it kind of is. It's a gimmick. It's pretty stupid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. You know, it's like exactly. It's like it's like holding the bottle rocket in your hand instead of putting it in a bottle. It's fucking stupid, but you know what? It's a hell of a lot more fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just let that bitch burn your hand uh, on the way yeah. out. Yeah. No, no, that's the whole thing, you know? It, and, uh, man, it, you know, I just, for a place like Tennessee, from what John's told me, it, it would it would stand to reason that, that the waters that you're fishing, while you may have some you know western or traditional fly anglers running around there uh, you know who cares i mean the the brook trout are awesome you know they're they're their own special strain let people do what they're going to do to catch the fish and just not have a big deal but yeah the, yeah. the pretentiousness of fly i i don't know what it is because man well it, it, it goes in conventional too i mean there's there's guys that are like yeah. you know oh what what's that shit you, you got like I just picked up my daughter, a new bait caster today. She wanted a bait caster because she got a fish on one another day. She's like, I want a bait caster. I want that. So I was like, fine, we'll go down. We get her set up with a bait caster and a medium heavy action rod, all this other stuff. Uh, and, but there's like a culture of people about bait casters are like, oh, if you don't fish a bait caster, you can't do it for real. It's like, says who? Yeah. They, they call, those are the days that call spinning rods, fairy wands. I, I've heard plenty of that. <laughs> I've seen I've seen more fish killed on a spinning rod than I have a bait caster. I'll guarantee you, unless it's offshore, that's a different story. Yeah, but that, yeah, that, I mean, uh, damn people. Yeah, but Kyle, we have strayed so far from the point of this podcast, and I apologize. <laughs> no, no, you are absolutely fine. Like I sit here and bullshit for about whatever with you guys. <laughs> yeah, but this, but I, I want people to know. I want to know about more about you for one, and I want people to know more about you. Yeah. So, how did you get in a tin car? Um, I seen uh, Aaron 
which you guys have had on before, um, on an Ace video, uh, which I'm sure you guys have seen. He's done a second one with him really recently. Um, and I don't know, just because I, I followed Ace long before that, and just seeing that, I don't know, it, it just seemed really interesting to me. So I stopped Aaron's Facebook and because uh, I didn't have Instagram at the time and found him and just started talking to him and he was super inviting and uh, it was probably I think August or no October uh, of 2021 when I uh, got my first rod which was a giant piece of shit from Amazon <laughs> and uh, <laughs> went up and went fishing with Aaron and uh, you know John because you fished with him he kicked my fat ass all over the mountain He's pretty good at that. Oh my god! And the man is terrible at telling directions, and you know, oh judgment god. of how far it's going to be. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't think he's actually that terrible. I just think he's a pathological fucking liar. Fuck you, Aaron. <laughs> because, yeah. because hear that, Aaron? Just, Get a GPS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that dude, he knows how far it is, but he gets you invested in it. And he doesn't want to tell you because he doesn't want you to turn around. Yeah, you know? he's like, I, can't, I got a lot of this fat fuck or he's going to turn around. <laughs> God damn. Oh. But it's, hey. uh, it, it became an obsession. Uh, I just, once I had success, um, in which at the time, you know, when we went, it was October, it was close to spawn for them. So, all the big boys weren't really out to play so we just caught you know a shitload of dinks and all that but it was a good time you know ate some smoked salmon in the middle of a stream and you know it was just an all-around good day and i was hooked after that point and uh i got into the fixed line freaks group on facebook and instagram and that's where i met uh you know some other of your guests like amanda and uh nate and uh it I don't know from there, you know, it, it's just been a crazy obsession, I guess. Uh, and since then, I've, I feel like I've done fairly well with it, uh, even though I tend to shoot off the mouth quite a bit on social media, but I'm an asshole. So anytime I see somebody shitting on it, I kind of give them shit back. <laughs> <laughs> So what, what has been, did you ever, not to like completely just, you know, throw out your location, but I know you and I were talking about a, a river a while back, the little pigeon. Yes, sir. Uh, you ever get out for any smallies on fixed line out there? I have not. And again, uh, actually, I, I lied. I did try because I did uh, make that fly order from you back last year. Uh, so I went one day and took those out, but it was, it had pissed rain the day before and it was just not the day for it. Um, and which, like I said, you know, I don't really feel like fixed line is meant for a bigger river. A lot of people disagree with that and that may be true, but to me, I'm not, I, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to put a 20 foot line on my rod, you know sling it out in the giant river and kind of hope for the best I, maybe one day i'll get to that point but you know, see then now, uh, see and then i don't know see that that's the one thing that pisses me off so much about Tinkara, like legitimately upsets me is the the line length you know like <laughs> if there's a spot you want to reach and uh, i understand like how to break down water but i always felt incredibly limited with fixed line it didn't matter if I had a 18 foot line, a 10 foot line, a nine foot line. It didn't matter. It always felt limited. And when I just needed that, because I, I fish a lot of still water, right? And, you know, mm. a 10 car in still water is really not the deal, right? But I did it anyway. But I, I just felt so limited because I always needed like that, um, like legitimately needed like that extra two foot to like present the fly where I wanted to, yeah. not to be, not like, the pinpoint perfect but you know within like a three to four foot radius of where i want to be 
I feel like should probably be close enough to, you know, entice a bite. But that, that was one thing that always like pissed me off because once you get that 20 foot of line in on your 11 foot rod, you have nine foot of line to hand line. And there, there is an art to hand line, but hand line is fucking stupid. Like <laughs> it sucks. I haven't mastered it and I no. don't really, yeah, I don't really see the need to ever master it. I, I've done it uh, because I've hooked into some really decent stalker rainbows around here, but it, yeah, I, I love it. I do uh, fix lines, my ship. That's what I do. But at the same time, if I'm on still water or a bigger river, I'm not going to be doing it. I'm, I'm with you, dude. I think, I think it shines in creeks, like honestly, I think creeks and small rivers mm-hmm. or uh, streams. Streams and rivers are actually different. They, they have different uh, variables that make them those words. Um, but, you know, creeks specifically, I think they're awesome in creeks because you get a lot of reach. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, every fly placement, uh, except for weighted nymphs, but that doesn't matter. Uh, because uh, it is really delicate. It is honestly a very delicate way to present uh, a fly. It is, it, especially at, like I love throwing dries. Nothing gets my dick harder than seeing something take a dry. It's ridiculous. But at the same time, you can't really do that on a giant river. No, not really. And you know, when you start throwing that much line on fixed fixed line, you're just swinging flies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I fucking hate swinging flies. I can't, <laughs> and it, it's not a bad technique. I just it it bothers me because I feel so. I have to wait, and if I if I'm gonna wait to swing flies, I'd rather just throw an indicator or a bob or whatever you want to call it. I'd rather just watch a bobber. Yeah, for sure. That's why I fish streamers. I, it's because it gives me something to do, like constantly. There's a lot of casting, and then you have to manage line and strip line, and that's why that's why I fish streamers. <laughs> so I secretly sweet. think Aaron feels the same way. You know, I, I'm sure you guys have seen his post that giant he nailed on that sculpin. Yeah, yeah. but it's, <sighs> I'm jealous. Dude, he's he's been after that fish for so long, though. Yeah, dude. So that's that's like Aaron's fish of a lifetime. He's been hunting that fish forever because that a fish similar to that broke him off that one time and that haunted him right oh yeah so, so what is your fish though that is like at this point in time like that fish of a lifetime for you i would have to say a 12 inch brook uh which isn't something that comes easy here uh but i've got a i've got a pretty good idea of where they're at um, I'm just dumb as fuck and didn't take that opportunity back when the weather was, you know, a little better. Uh, but late spring, I'm going to make it happen. Um, I know the area and I know the fish are there. Uh, I've had multiple accounts of people telling me that they are. Um, so that that's my goal for late spring. I'm after that 12 inch brook. Um, but other than that, um, I really, really want to hit a 15 plus brown, which I don't have around here. Uh, for whatever reason, I I don't have browns in this area. Um, conservation is dog shit here. So my first brown trout actually came just uh, two months ago. I went up with Aaron and we actually found him there. Uh, he's got them all over. I just... I don't have them here. Uh, I fished in this area for 22 years. And the only person I've ever known to catch a brown was my brother, Ryan. And that was probably eight years ago. And that's the only one I've ever heard of here. They just, uh, I don't even know that they, I was looking at the stocking program and the amount of rainbows to anything else is insurmountable it is incredibly... it's stupid that's the only thing they stock here man they they stock a lot of them 
but it's also it's also becoming uh, around your neck of the woods is becoming a tourist destination. It, it has been since the you know whenever, right? It's always been, but it is a huge tourist destination now, and I think that has a lot to do with it. I think I feel like it because even my local creek, I I live actually an hour outside of or roughly an hour outside of like Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge. Um, and even my local creek, they stock it weekly, nine months out of the year mm-hmm. with straight rainbows. Uh, and the same for, you know, the creeks that run through Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Sevierville, um, all of that. So, it, and, and it makes sense. I mean, they, they see more visitors here than any other city in the country, uh, to my knowledge, anyway. But I don't know. It just seems excessive. Put some browns in there. If you're going to stock, just just do both. <laughs> it, it just makes <laughs> sense to me. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how Tennessee bases their <laughs> stream ecology based off of, you know, what they're going to stock there. I know that we're finding more and more rainbows in brook trout uh, creeks and streams, and they don't fucking belong there. No, no, not at all. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm just going to go out on the limb because <laughs> this is this is a big issue out west here, between whether we stock or not, and and thinking about what you guys are talking about with the in in regards to the Browns, the Brooks, the brook trout, where you're at, they've they've been established for a long time. Uh, I, were were they actually like a native fish? They are. Yeah, it's a native fish. So they have like you know, pretty significant timeline of ecology, but the Browns, the Browns were brought from Europe, right? Yeah. The Browns were brought from Europe. And then okay. they were putting the, they were putting the PM, the Pier Marquette was the first river they were put in. And then I think they actually went out West from there. I'm not exactly yeah. certain. Yeah. They what brought them it? out here from Michigan. Uh, and, and we ended up with them here, but we have really hyper aggressive char species. We have bull trout. So yeah, uh, not not a lot. Of, it competes with a Dolly Varden or a bull trout in that class and category of like pure aggression and fury. Um, my thought is, is uh, a brown trout's highly predatory. And so my thought would be is that they probably are trying to keep them away from your native population. They're probably going to places that they've done a lot of creel study and, and a lot of uh, survey on. And they're saying, well, we can put browns over here but we don't want them here. That's probably why you have a good brook trout population where you're at versus where those browns are. But rainbows, rainbows take over every damn thing. They're prolific spawners and they get into everything, which out here is fine because they're a native species here. But where you're at, um, they, they're they hyper aggressive too. They're highly predatory, but they're also just pigs with everything. I mean, it, you'll, oh my God. Ni- 99.9% of the time you're fishing a stream with quote unquote trout, you're going to catch more rainbows than you are cutthroat, hybrid, you know, cut, cut bows, um, bowls, uh, browns, brookies, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you're, you're going to just catch because they're just pigs. That's, and, and people love rainbow trout, you know, that's like the first fish most kids catch out here. But my guess would be is that they're trying to really protect that population, but they're probably also looking for other watersheds that they can put it in where they verified there's no brookie population, but that's, yeah. that's what I've kind of understood what we've done out here. You know, that would, that would make sense. Um, because a lot of the places you'll find Browns in East Tennessee, other than, you know, like there's some small streams up there, uh, in the mountains that have a few that aren't, you know, they're not, uh, they're not like, they're like third order third or fourth order streams that were stocked you know like many moon ago yeah. um but you'll find a lot of browns in these tailwaters like tennessee's got famous tailwaters oh yeah uh, you'll find them between the weirs and you know all these other places and i think that's because they are regulated in in that way it, it it's very difficult for those browns uh, almost impossible i would imagine for those browns to actually get into the native ranges of some of these uh brookies for the most part you know because like but as far as i know we've had no tigers caught here uh which that would kind of make sense but i 
I, I, I don't know. I still feel like there's a couple places where you probably could find a good tiger, but, uh, you know, there's, I mean, I'm here. sure there's a lot of, I'm sure there's a lot of bucket biology going on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like people, people that want that and they, they don't understand the significance of the Southern Appalachian strain rookies. Like they don't understand the significance of this, this native strain of fish, you know, that's literally been there since, uh, you know, the water started flowing like yeah, that's forever, forever, literally like the, the Appalachians are so fucking old. There's no fossils there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, no, seriously. Like, yeah, yeah. The mountains are so fucking old there, but there's no fossils because they were there first. Well, yeah, uh, the, the Appalachians, from what I remember, were formed uh, during the uh, Pangea, you know, continental yeah. collision. They're, they're very similar to the Himalayas, you know, from that continental collision. Uh, so, yeah, it would, it would, you know, reasonably, you know, be considered that, you know, there wouldn't be any fossils there, you know, as opposed to things that are cast in pyroclastics and, lot, yeah. you know, uh, um, different types of sedimentary layers and things like that. But um, that's, that is an old, old species. And I could see where, like, the protection of that's very vital. The amount of people that I've run into, because I, I fish mainly the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, the amount of people that have just been driving down the road or I meet on trail that have stopped and told me that they have caught their limit of brook trout just fucking runs all over me. Um, which I understand that laws there. Legally, you can keep them, but I think you're a fuckface if you do. And you see guys walking out of there with, you know, stringers full of seven, eight inch brook trout. Like, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, really? Uh, yeah, indeed. I, it, it used to rub me really fucking wrong, but I used to be like that asshole also that was like. I have oh, to. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, you know, but um, <laughs> I think the more kind of like uh, mature I get as with fishing you know not necessarily myself as an age but as i mature as an angler and start to understand a little bit more you know the limits are there for a reason Mm -hmm. you know if if the fish was threatened they would change it you know but they're 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 not as i don't i mean people are gonna run run all over me i've said dinkaro's (laughs) urine nymphing and you're fucked after this one yeah i'm fucked after this one dude um if they were as threatened as we make them out to be, then they would change the limits. I mean, maybe I, I don't oh, yeah. feel like fish and game is as ignorant as we make them out to be. I think they're fucking liars. Right. But I don't, I don't think they're as ignorant as we make them out to be. Yeah. I, and that may just be like a personal thing with me. Like I, I may just be an asshole and call people fuck face for no reason. Uh, but you know, to me i don't feel like you should be keeping brook trout uh, especially these southern strains like keep the rainbows you know they they don't taste any fucking different like <laughs> uh, give me my potatoes are done i will be right back boys <laughs> right on get them in you yeah so i mean there's, there's just i i keep fish but i don't I don't keep trout. I stopped keeping trout quite a while ago. Uh, and some people are like, oh, don't you like fried trout? Oh, I love fried trout, but I really don't have any use for them. So I, the only fish that I keep now are, are ocean sport rock fish that are very plentiful. Um, I keep hatchery salmon, hatchery steelhead, because they're put out there to keep, you know, that's for that reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, I wish I could keep a wild salmon or a wild steelhead out of a river. Well, we have wild retention or, you know, this is a big ongoing debate. I, I could say wild. Somebody would say, well, they're not wild. They're all hatchery origin. And, and very well, yes, there, there's been a lot of studies on genetics that say that these things are. But when you have a species uh, as ancient as that one, one would think that 
you would want to preserve that, you know, have, have some kind of limitations on retention, like with our wild uh, trout, you know, they, they, they say, okay, they, you can get too many, which as anglers were like, no, you never get too many, but they, you know, stream ecology, a trout is very resident, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm going to swim out into this river and then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do this. They kind of stay in one area and they will rape and pillage everything. Rainbows do that. They're pigs. So they're like, yeah, you can keep two between this size and this size slot limits uh, on certain streams. And then there's other ones that are like, you know, two trout, eight inch minimum length, you know? And so they do that because at, at a couple trout a person, what's the average person? Are they going to be out there seven days a week keeping, you know, 14 fish a, a week out of that? No, they're going to keep a couple. They're going to say, hey, I had a good day fishing. I'm going to cook up some trout and that's going to be it. It's really yeah. not going to hurt anything. But having uh, as generous of limits as like five or 10, or you take your whole family up there and you guys are flinging power bait and trout magnets and you're just gagging fish left and right. And you walk out of there 35 or 40, that's going to do some damage to the population. Absolutely. I, I don't know. I'm, I get into it with people way too much, way more than I should <laughs> over this you know, kind of Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Kyle. No, you're good. I'm um, here to listen to you guys. No, we're here to listen to you. <laughs> we, we, we jacked this all up, but I have really enjoyed this conversation. Um, I think preserving the stream is arguably just as important, if not more important, than the fish. Um, like the brook trout, that, that's how the brook trout survive. Is there, There's a very, very specific level of um i'm not a fucking biologist right so i'm gonna say toxicity right because i don't know what the actual word for it is but there's a certain level of toxicity once you reach that in these mountain streams it's going to kill those fish that's why oh, yeah. pebble that's why fucking pebble mines are bad and like all this other shit's bad for the fisheries because it kills the fish like us as humans our interactions with the streams like if we never touch the water we would always have these incredible fisheries but you know what they're not fisheries if you don't fish them you know mm -hmm. so it's like uh, i think limiting our impact on the places we're fishing is far more important than uh keeping two brook trout a day yeah and which here i if i remember right i don't really pay attention to it because i'm mainly catch and release uh i think it's seven a day uh of any size uh, rainbow or brook or brown, that, um here maybe, maybe that's something you know that's that that is kind of disturbing to think about um at, it's, at, it's really past. fucked up here like i i went to i i took my first trip out west last year um august of 21 to colorado and i caught more fucking fish than like my arms fucking hurt I, I was catching a hundred fish a day and granted it was on spin gear because I hadn't really discovered anything else at the point, but it conservation there just was miles ahead of here. Uh, and I hate that, but at the same time, what do you do? You know? Well, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, uh, so there's the native fish coalition, there's trout unlimited. There's all these, you know all these organizations why why are we not pushing for a little bit more regulated uh well i i've joined uh nfc um uh, i've done that last year but they don't have a tennessee chapter yet because they didn't have enough members from tennessee so i i can really do fuck all and that's no fault of theirs. You know, they, they do have to have the memberships and the activity of people from this area. And to my knowledge, myself and Aaron are the only ones that are a part of that, uh, unfortunately. So maybe we can kind of, you know, get that taken care of and get a step in the right direction. Well, you know what? Uh, everybody listening to this shit. <laughs> uh, if you're in <laughs> Tennessee... Uh, hit these guys up, man. Native Fish Coalitions, it, it's kind of a big deal. Um, they're, they're, Absolutely. It's, it's a small organization right now, for sure. Um, but it's, it's going to be able to do a lot 
for our fisheries in the future. Uh, if you want your kids, kids to be able to fish the same water you are in a better state, then we have to do something about it. We do. And, and uh, especially for here, this area is just, it's fucked. Like, I'm going to be completely honest. The, the conservation is absolute dog shit. Jethro comes out here every day and just catches whatever he can and throws it in the freezer. And it, I don't know. I understand they stock, they stock here weekly for a reason. Um, but shit, at the same time, don't go up into the park and keep every brookie you catch. It just, it blows my mind. Yeah, that, that seems a little, little out, outlandish of those numbers, you know. Uh, there's a difference, you know, stock fish, by all means, keep them. But these mm -hmm. these very specific native range fish that um, maybe their numbers aren't threatened right now, but it's it's not so much right now. It's the ahead. And it goes back to the whole uh, the summers are getting hotter. Uh, water levels are getting lower. Uh, I don't care if people say the warm is not real or whatever, I, uh, wh whatever you call it, it's happening. Right. It like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it really is like we, we, we're having record droughts. We're having more wildfires. We're having all this stuff going on. Um, nothing lasts forever, especially without care. So I don't know. Um, and, go ahead. I've noticed that, you know, like I said, you know, I've fished this area for 22 years now, and it I've noticed that over the years, um, like we'll get a decent rain, water levels are up. They're not really up. They're back to what they used to be, um, which is still lower than what they were years before that. It, I don't know. It, this area just pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, I, I think that it, it goes without saying, though, that um, the anglers that enjoy fishing those areas really need to, I, I think it's an educational issue uh, in a lot of ways. And I think that people like sure. yourself, Kyle, can, can do a lot to educate. <clears throat> it, it's enraging when you see people taking, you know, things that, that you hold near and dear. And part of that could be mitigated by the, the, um, parks and wildlife, whatever it is, you know, the, the, the local fish and game, uh, they, they could be mitigating that by providing more opportunity for, um, different species if they wanted to. And I know that there's a lot of people there with degrees in biology and all that, but let's face it. It's a state ran agency. It's a bureaucracy. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, you know, they hire people, they say, yeah, it'd be fine. You know, uh, let's, let's sell licenses so that we can keep our job protected. We're out there enjoying the resources. We're the ones that want to go out and deer hunt. We're the ones that want to bear hunt. We're the ones that want to go fish. We want to, you know, have these fisheries forever. We want our kids to be able to enjoy these fisheries. And I think it's going to take, you know, between people that are passionate about that getting involved you know like like you're talking about the native fish coalition you know there's a lot of different groups out there that that do a lot of stuff like the uh cca the coastal Con conservancy association i'm a member of that and we and we really uh work hard to work with our local uh fish and wildlife to try to uh enhance uh the the stocks of fish for anglers to go after which raises license sales, does all the other stuff, provides yeah. more funding and income for the hatcheries and for the technicians. And it also casts money back to uh, different, um, uh, what, what do I want to call it? Different entities that can actually do things to improve the habitat that have like the big equipment. Like one of our big things is, is uh, Portland General Electric. They run a bunch of hydroelectric dams, uh, you know, dams, big bag boogeyman, except we need lights and electricity. Uh, it's hydroelectric. We're not going to get away from it anytime soon. Windmills and solar panels aren't going to do it right now. Um, so we need the hydro, but hydroelectric dams create fish passage issues. So PG says, okay, because we have all this stuff going on, let's enhance bank here. Let's do this. Let's do that. And we work with them and we help them with like, Hey, you know, 
let's let's enhance this let's take care of this habitat let's replace this riparian area all this other stuff and that and that's what we need to do but we also take on responsibilities with some rivers to actually release um um imprinted fish smolts is what what they're called uh to get those out if if in your area you can get people involved with that kind of thing and they get their hands dirty you know putting pit tags in these fish or you know just feeding them getting them released and taking care of the area it might make a big impact i i would hope so uh and i would like to try to get to that point eventually um it, it, i don't know i still have fun getting out doing what i do but at the end of the day i'd still like to be able to you know I, i've had several 30 plus fish days but more is better <laughs> yeah for sure so well what what do you got you know what what do you got planned for this year what what's your big plans outside you said you're going to colorado you're doing a trip out there again uh what what do you got on the on in store for this year as far as your fishing goes um i'm definitely gonna go chase that 12 inch rookie uh i do plan to go back up link up with aaron uh at least a few more times uh, he's about an hour and a half away um and then i have the colorado trip shout out to chad um <laughs> and i'm super stoked for that uh because when i went last year i hadn't uh i hadn't discovered fixed line so i'd like to hit some of the smaller streams for that uh but at the same time i'm going to go to walmart in denver and pick up a $20 spin combo and just absolutely destroy them like I did last year. Nice. Well, isn't, um, uh, isn't Jonathan Atuna is, isn't he Colorado? He is. Uh, as far as I know, he is taking the week off that I'm there. Uh, so we're going to be fishing quite a bit together. Oh, awesome. That'll be fun. Yeah. A very knowledgeable dude. That guy's nuts. <laughs> uh, I've <laughs> learned so much from that guy. He's him, Aaron, Nate, and Amanda, and Nick. Uh, just every one of them, just great people. <laughs> Which you guys have had, I think, most of them on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, the, the, the community is really strong, the Tinkara community. And, uh, I think so very, very tight knit. And I think it's good because there again, uh, you know, as, as you've said, and we've talked about multiple times, you get, you get a lot of people that are wanting to kind of lock horns and engage in kind of a, you know, wild, wild, uh, you know, bash fest back and forth. And so it's good that you have a community of people that are like really tight knit and supportive of each other. And I love that. Yeah. It's, it's one of the better communities that I've been a part of, um, there has been a few assholes, but very few. Um, nothing's as toxic as the ball python community. I'll admit <laughs> that. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Have you have you ever been in the on the in the pan fishing fucking Facebook group, dude? That the them dudes are fucking cutthroat. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember that. Is that the one where the guy was talking shit about your flies? Or? Oh my God. No, that was because you didn't know how to like, because you were using like car wash masks to tie squirmies or some shit or to tie mop flies. I get, I guess I'll tell that story. I I have forgotten about that. (laughs) Fuck that guy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) He was like showcasing this material, which means like, um, like nothing to me now, but. Uh, I was like, dude, you could save so much money if you just used car wash mitts for your mops. And he said, um, if you don't know how to use it, uh, just say that, that or some shit. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what he said. He was like, if you don't know how to use it, just say that. And I was like, all right, first off, and I'm like waving my fucking finger at the at the Facebook page. <laughs> like, first off dick like i have the exact same material as you and i stopped using it because this is faster and easier but like people eat his flies up and he's an actual piece of shit like 
I, I, I don't. I'm really not on is. Facebook. I'm not on Facebook anymore. But he is in every fly fishing. And I hope you listen to this, dude. And I hope you message me, and we can we can come to an amicable solution to not fist fight on Facebook. But like, that's I'm I'm not on Facebook anymore because there's there's way there's people have found uh, how to get under my skin faster on Facebook than anywhere else. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and then and they're just like rude and condescending, and all he's trying to do is sell flies and. People, people just like the absolute shit out of his posts. Like, I think it's because he's an asshole and 90% of people are keyboard warriors until yeah. they get punched in the fucking mouth, that is. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's always been kind of my, my thought process with it. Uh, it I, I never say anything to anybody online that I wouldn't say to them in person. That's exactly. just common courtesy, right? And I sit there and think to myself, am I going to go on some like lunatic tirade typing or whatever? No, I'm not going to do that because I wouldn't do it in person. It, it never ceases to amaze me, though, that there's somebody that's just overtly jealous or I to be honest with you. And I've said this for years now. Social media is like the greatest place to take like psychology majors and just have them analyze how fucking crazy people are like when, when, when we talk <laughs> well yeah oh yeah it, it's like it's like everybody's got their their quirk you know they kind of like their weirdness but man go on a fishing page and you will find out how you know we, we talk about like uh um, mood uh dsm five cluster b traits right you know <laughs> we'll get real technical here uh personality disorders you will find how people can flip switches with personalities disorders very quickly on a uh fishing page because that person they can be totally mild-mannered no problem everything else and you put them on a fishing page and it's just like one day they're totally cool. The next day they're off the rails. You know, it's like, holy shit, what in the hell is going on here? And it's just insane. And I'm like, what? Why? You know, why do you have to be like that? But of all things, a panfish page to have a pissing match over fly material? Come on. They're fucking yeah. bluegill. Yeah, and, I, and I went in, I fell victim to it. I fell right into his, his, his trap. That was kind of my fault. I told you to do it. You did, but <laughs> you instigated, and he was he was just enough of an asshole to make me do it. So <laughs> they actually, I, I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think they actually kicked me out of that group. I don't know if I left it or if I was kicked out. Ah, uh, either way, you're better off. Yeah, but let's see him keep that same fucking energy in person. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God. Uh, you know, for, for our listeners out there, just, just learn one thing from this or just take this thought away. Just, you know, if you start seeing something go down the toilet, it's just best to walk off because these people are out of their mind. They're sitting at home, they're playing with themselves or doing whatever the fuck they do in their free time. <laughs> and, and I, I, you know, they're, they're, they're compulsory. Like, I, I don't, fucking no there, there's got to be some technical term for it. anyways they're out of their damn mind and it's not even worth wasting your time with those people it's like we can be totally happy and cool in our own little world here so <laughs> and i believe that but at the same time i fuck it's so hard to let things slide <laughs> but especially like when it comes to you know infighting as far as fishing goes like we're all doing the same fucking thing shut your fucking mouth and go catch a fish it's yeah. I I've lost friends on Facebook and it's made me cry. <laughs> Not really, but you know, just cause I get some asshole comment on a post like, Hey, you, you mountain boys and you're fucking catching tiny fish. Fuck you. All right. I'm going out here and I'm catching 50 fucking fish a day. I'm having the time of my life while you're sitting here being a salty bitch online. Like <laughs> I'm definitely the winner here. Fuck you. <laughs> Well, Kyle, fuck, dude, we didn't talk about you at all. 
<laughs> I think we got a pretty good idea of Kyle right then and there. <laughs> yeah. Snake breeding, fishing, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, dude, where, where can everybody find you at? Uh, Instagram, Dreamscale Adventures, or Facebook, Kyle Rowe, R O W E. Um, and then with you guys, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I haven't really been doing the social media thing as far as fishing goes very long, but you know, I'm here. Well, everybody, you heard it there, and I hope you get your 12 inch brookie because that, that's a trophy mm-hmm. fish. Oh, you'll know it. <laughs> yeah, you'll know it. And uh, this episode of Working Class Fishing, everyone, has been brought to you by CD Fishing, 317 Flies, Angry Rooster Fly Company, and Live Rig. And Kyle, I just got to say, man, uh, really just thanks for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. We've had this plan for, I think, like four months. Yeah, I believe like, so, li- since literally. Like September or some shit. Yeah, literally like three or four months now and i'm so glad it finally got to happen and yeah, the, yeah. these these are I, you know i think it's hard talking with friends um on the podcast i think it's harder than talking to people i have no idea about yeah. because we have totally different conversations because we already know each other like yeah we we we, we already <laughs> we yeah. already know all this stuff so <laughs> i think it's harder to have conversations yeah uh, trailing off is kind of easy yeah. But uh, they just thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kyle. I appreciate it. Uh, I, we appreciate everything, all your support, everything else of the podcast. I can't, I cannot say enough of how much we appreciate it. You know, yeah, you you might be a self proclaimed asshole in your own right, but dude, you're <laughs> you're a rock solid friend, a great supporter of what we're doing, and you know, we we absolutely one hundred and ten percent cherish your friendship. So. We can't say enough. We we really do. I love the shit out of you guys. <laughs> You're the best, man. <laughs> Likewise, Brad. Yeah. So uh, anyways, folks, uh, there you have it. That's Kyle. Go check him out over at Dream Scale Adventures. You can find him on Instagram or under Kyle Rowe over on Facebook. You can also find out more about Kyle through us. Uh, you can find us on our website at workingclassfishing.com where we have our blog and we have links to all of our different listening platforms and YouTube. Uh, you can go directly over to YouTube and look up working class fishing podcast. You can find us on Instagram at working class fishing podcast. You can follow our personal page, WC fish on Facebook or the working class fishing podcast page. Uh, and that is where you will find us. We are all over. We're worldwide. We're on Apple. We're on Google. We're on Spotify. If you're listening to this, you're probably on one of those. Let us know, though, where you're at. And if you want to talk to us, you want to come on the podcast, you can hit us up at workingclassfish at gmail.com. So until next time, everybody, thank you so much for listening. We hope that you have a good day. Uh, Hit the wrong button. We'll leave that there.